What's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center and store again today. And uh, we're going to answer a subscriber's question, okay? Now, just before we get into that, right in that bottom corner, right down there where my finger's pointed is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that, okay? We appreciate you doing so. Make sure you hit the bell for notifications of other videos that we put up. The question was, can you get a venomous snake to be as handleable as like a ball python. We're going to answer that right here in this video. So let's get right into this. So the question was asked if a venomous snake like this western diamondback or this beautiful albino monocle cobra or this beautiful gaboon viper right here, if these venomous snakes can become as handleable as things like a ball python, a boa, a burmese. All right, now, as you've just seen in some of the pictures of some of the venomous snakes that we have, the question was, can you make a venomous snake become as handleable as like a ball python or boa or Burmese or reticulated, whatever the case may be, as a non-venomous species? The short answer to that is yes, you can. But the key question comes in to, should you? Can you? Yes, you can. Should you? Well, should is going to be relative to I'm, I'm going to say it's going to be based off of keeper experience. Does that mean that I agree with experienced keepers going on to YouTube, going on to TikTok, going on to Instagram, whatever, whatever social media platforms they use, and just openly free handling things like King Cobras and stuff like that? No, that's absolutely stupid, and they shouldn't be showing people that crap. For one, it encourages others to do dumb things that they don't have the experience for. Number two, it's just pre bad precedence. Because in the times when somebody gets hit by those things, the one thing that I always try to explain to folks from an educational standpoint is people, especially politicians, are always looking for a reason to harm this industry. The industry that we, in this love, of being able to keep more exotic animals. And when somebody gets nailed by a venomous snake or somebody gets hit by one that was their pet or something like that, then you start having all these people that come out of the woodwork, oh, they shouldn't have those in the first place, they shouldn't do this, they shouldn't do that, they shouldn't have those. You have politicians who are afraid of these types of animals, that fuels that. And that in turn just makes the industry and these animals look bad. It's not about the person looking bad, I don't give a crap. They, they get hit and, and they, you know, they kill over from doing something stupid, whatever, that's their problem. But what I care about is it makes these animals look bad. Most of the time, they don't, it doesn't make the human look bad. They're just like, oh, man, you got nailed by a snake. Well, they shouldn't, you know, they shouldn't be keeping that snake. But, man, that snake is bad. Now, they're going to, you know, other people, oh, bad snake. Kill the snake. Kill this. Kill that. No, don't do that just because some idiot wanted to do more than what he was really capable of or he wanted to show off for, or she show off for a camera. That's not what this is about. But the question becomes down to, can you free handle a venomous snake and get one to be just as handleable as a ball python, the, the, the answer to that is absolutely, you sure can. You sure can. But there's risk to that. There's going to be an obvious risk of getting hit. Well, what is the downside of that? Well, for one, you have venom going into your body. Number two, you can have secondary infections. Number three, you can become allergic to the anti-venom after being given to it. And there's so many things that can happen just from being hit by these things. Loss of limb, loss of function, a breakdown of certain abilities. So there's so many things that can happen from this, not to mention the incredible expense that comes behind being treated. Let me be clear. If you're within two states of antivenom, you're close, okay? And that's if you can get antivenom to you quickly or what we call close. There's not very much antivenom for exotic animals running throughout the country. There's only a few major data banks. Some CDCs will have certain uh, types of antivenom. Some zoos will have certain types of antivenom. So it's not, again, I go back to, it's not so much a question of can you get a venomous snake to become as handleable as like a ball python, something like that. Because, yeah, the answer to that is absolutely yes, you can. Yes, you can. You spend enough time with any animal and it can become used to routines. It can become socialized. But there's some that should be considered pets and some that should not be considered pets. And when you lose your respect for the animal and you become complacent, that's when you start taking undue chances. And that's usually when the accidents happen when it comes to animals like the ones that you've seen earlier. So, again, it doesn't make these animals bad. These animals, they, they have a job to do. They have ways in which they act. They have characteristical traits, personality traits. They have things they're just going to do. 
Can we help them to overcome some of those personality traits and characteristical traits by spending time with them, working with them, uh, getting them used to certain routines? Yeah, absolutely. We absolutely can, can help an animal to overcome certain fears or aggression levels. Absolutely. But again, we all like interacting with the animals that we love. We absolutely enjoy, as humans, being able to work with things that we find fascinating. But there has to be certain respectable levels. We have to do it within a certain level of respect for that animal, of whatever that animal may be, and what it's capable of. When Again, when we start taking chances, when we lose our respect to that animal, that's when the disasters tend to happen. Okay? So, I hope this has kind of been helpful. And I know it doesn't, you know, it's not, a, not necessarily a long video. And I knew this wasn't going to be a long video because I'm not going to get deep into free handling and self immunizations and some of the stuff that happens with inside of the venomous world. I'm not talking about that stuff because it, it just, it, it opens way too many doors for, uh, for too much foolishness. But I think this was a great question because not that I want people to go out and start trying to work with a, a rattlesnake or a cobra or a gaboon or puff adder or, you know, Russell's Viper, Bushmaster, whatever the venomous snake may be, and wanted to try and see if they can get one that's handleable to where you can just go, oh man, cool, I can put my gaboon right there. Awesome. Here we go. Yeah, that's a stupid idea. Absolutely stupid idea. It's a good question because does it help for people to learn educationally as to is there any difference between a non-venomous snake versus a venomous snake when it comes to what could be a personality or a characteristical trait? Meaning, does not does non-venomous just settle down easier or is it able to be settled down where a venomous snake is not? No, absolutely not. Either or can become socialized, as we call it social. It's not friendly. It's not tame. It's social. Either one can become social. You just have the added obvious disadvantage of a venomous snake comes with obvious venom. We hope you've enjoyed this video. We hope this has helped. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, the bell for notification. Also, check out the TikTok page, Reptile Rangers, the Instagram page, Colonel's World Reptile Zoo, the Facebook page, Colonel's World Reptile Zoo, and you can come see us here at the zoo and store. Feel free to get with us in the information below. Our information will be down there. If anybody has any questions, you can call us in. If you have questions, you need help, uh, you want to know if we sell something, if we have something that you're interested in, that's fine. Get in touch with us anytime. Feel free and write us in and let us know of other things that you want us to film about. People are doing it all the time. This video and a lot of previous videos have been subscriber questions or topics they wanted us to video on. So feel free to write in and give us other ideas of things to film on. Now, we appreciate you coming along with us week after week after week. We'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.